Those ties there. Typically, our offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator don't get out on the road much in season. So it makes more sense to have them closer to home. If they do happen to go out, it's not that far to go. So um, my guess is it'll be closer to Athens than South Georgia. Uh, but we've got to reconfigure. First of all, I'm going to hire our, our line coach. And once we know who everybody is, what their experiences are, what their connections, what connections they may have, we'll be able to decide who goes where. But again, we're going to continue to divide the state of Georgia uh, into nine pieces for our, um, our nine uh, full-time recruiters that are um, the full-time coaches. And then uh, our philosophy of trying to divide to try to divide the metro Atlanta area into nine as well uh, to have everybody have a piece of Metro Atlanta as well. So we'll, we'll continue that philosophy, but exactly where he'll land in recruiting, I'm not, I'm not certain. Or do you believe you have an office mind by the time Ted Perry comes to an end? I hope so. Um, we, we, we would love to, to be able to get that guy on the road uh, and all that type of thing, but again, it, it's important to make sure we get the right person. And uh, if it takes a little longer than that, so be it, but uh, the goal would be to get it done prior to then, but um, you know, if all we had to hire was a line coach, I think that would have been done by now, but because we had to go uh, with an offensive coordinator and a line coach, I wanted to uh, get the offensive coordinator hired first, uh, so because um, I wanted to know what he was looking for in an offensive line coach. I want him to have that comfort factor, because like I said before, when I became a coordinator the first time and being a quarterback's coach, you, that's your biggest hire in your mind. I got to, I've got to make sure I've got the right line coach. And so I don't want to get a line coach that might not mesh as well as uh, as possible. So uh, the big the big thing was to try to on the timeline get the coordinator first, and then try to get the, the right line coach afterwards. I was going to ask you: is that is, is that is he going to hire the line coach? Are you going to? Uh, no, he'll have be, input. Yeah. Or? Oh, he'll have input. Yeah, certainly. And, and he's already had input in what what he's looking for in the other coach. Um, you know, so, <clears throat> so that, that was very important. But uh, yeah, there, I mean, it's just like even um, <clears throat> interviewing Brian, you know, we didn't have just the offensive staff and then we had the entire staff in there. It's, it's important. It's, it's a staff decision. It's not just an offensive side of the ball decision. And uh, we want everybody to have input and everybody uh, to uh, to be a part of the process, but in the end, you know, I've got to decide what I think is, is in the best interest of Georgia. But I certainly would. I want to know what I was. I wanted to know what the eventual coordinator would be. Obviously, it's Brian, and so uh, I want to make sure we had some good conversations on exactly what we're looking for before we, you know, started interviewing people or, or going too far down the road. Really. Mark, obviously, the NFL is a team in the college uh, to a certain extent. Uh, how did you judge his body of work as a coordinator? I know you put in the statistics and see one thing and he might see something else based on whatever. Yeah, well, um, there's only uh, 32 offensive coordinators in the world uh, that are coaching at that level. I mean, you don't, you don't uh, do what Brian's done for as long as he has without being excellent at what he does. Um, and uh, so that was never a question, his ability to coach or coach. His ability to put together an offensive scheme that would give us a great chance for success. Um, I think the fact that he, uh, I was convinced that he was sincere in his um, pursuit of moving to the college game if it was the right situation. And the fact that, uh, again, the things uh, that we believe in uh, <coughs> offensively are very much the same that, that he believes in. And we, we do um, we do have a pro style attack, and um, and so there there weren't a massive amount of candidates at the college level, quite frankly, that do the things that we do. Look at the uh, strength staff as they started working with, with the guys. That that again. Uh, our team will begin. We there there's uh, days that. Uh, they're, I guess they're called discretionary weeks that you have to have so many weeks that you don't have a mandatory 
the play, it's not mandatory for the players to lift and run and do all those kind of things. Uh, and we're approaching the time when we're going to start uh, the times that it can be mandatory, which will be this week coming up. Um, so um, I think we designated Wednesday as the day to start the, the strength and conditioning program uh, you know, in earnest and, and making it a mandatory type thing. But uh, I know our players are excited about uh, getting going. It's Coach Hockey, I think. It's coach Hockey, yes, sir. Is, has he settled his staff? Do you know for sure? Uh, we are, it's, the dust is about to settle, it's getting close. Speaking of that, uh, can you shed any light on Coach Van Hallinger? Obviously, you right. two have been together for a long, oh, long yeah. time and understand his league. Yeah, um, basically we've, um, we, we're just doing some restructuring uh, in our, in our staff and, uh, you know, the position that Dave was in is, is not going to, we're not replacing that position. We're, we're going a little different direction in how we're going to use our staff and our personnel. But Dave uh, has been a great blessing in my life and uh, he's done a great job here at Georgia. And I know he's uh, excited about his future uh, and what he'll do in the future. Another how clean type question, I guess. I think y'all got back from the bowl here. Has there been any other acre of attrition as far as the players on the team goes? Not that I know of. I mean, everybody's back in school and um, and, and seemingly very excited about uh, getting ready for 2015. It's uh, it's amazing how fast sometimes you can uh, turn the chapter and begin to look forward to what next year can bring. And <clears throat> you know, you've got a lot of guys that all of a sudden find themselves as they're they're the senior now. You know, they're like they used to sit in the back of the room and thinking I'll never come to the front row, which we you know, we put our seniors up front and juniors, then sophomores and <coughs> Excuse me, freshman in the back of the room, and so we got a brand new group of seniors. We got a brand new group of leaders. We got a brand new. Uh, there's some kids that are brand new. Period, just coming in at the mid year. You get a chance to meet those guys here uh, on signing day. We tend to, if they're not at their home school, trying to celebrate the uh, the decision uh, at their high school, they'll be with us. You know, the day that we have our press conference. So it's just it's kind of a new time, and, and there's a. Um, I think because there is change on the offensive side of the ball as far as the staff is concerned, uh, just like a year ago on defense, I think everybody's sitting there going, okay, if things didn't go exactly the way I wanted them last year, I got a chance to uh, uh, maybe show these coaches that I've got a chance to be a really good football player. I mean, you look at a guy like Mike Thornton last year on defense, he, he really was – it wasn't going great, you know, as far as he was concerned, as far as playing time and opportunity and all that. And, and the new staff came in and, and saw uh, what Mike could do. And I think Mike also, uh, because it was a new staff and new life, probably uh, probably produced a little bit better in practice too, knowing that he's got a chance. So there's a lot of excitement going into this year. Coach, could this have a similar impact on the research for the next quarterback? Coordinator, quarterbacks coach. Sam Center. Taking a fresh look at the quarterback candidates, could that have a similar impact? I mean, somebody might be perceived. Oh yeah. Oh, coach. absolutely. Um, you know, uh, every quarterback, and quite frankly, every position across the board. Even though there are some position coaches returning, uh, there'll, there'll still be uh, new opinions. Uh, our coordinators do have a lot to say on on who plays and who doesn't. It, it's it's a joint effort, without a doubt. But. Uh, the coordinator, if the coordinator sees something in a guy, and uh, when he runs a certain play, wants this guy in the game, uh, it may be completely different from what it was a year ago. Mark, how many candidates did you interview? Another question is, uh, do you have uh, whole staff involved in interviews before? Has that happened before? Is that typical? Um, we, yeah, we've done it in the past. Uh, it's been done. I guess, I guess the biggest thing is. There's a different dynamic to every guy. Right. Some guys, they're not interviewed. You, they can interview. If I interview and don't get his job, I'm gone. You know, what I mean? you know or, or there's a fear of, hey, if I interview, uh, I may not. If I don't get this job, I may not have a job. You know, it just depends on maybe who they work for. Sometimes it depends on, uh, you know, there's might be a guy that uh, is so established that uh, if you interview him. 
uh, and, and don't hire him, it, it breaks down uh, his uh, recruiting class that he's trying to build at another school. So, you know, there's all kind of dynamics too. So some guys are in a position to interview and some guys aren't. And, and Coach uh, Schottenheimer, uh, he knew that um, it was going to be important for me. I don't think I could have hired Brian without sitting down with him for four or five hours. Having all the all the questions and all the answers to the questions, it just wouldn't have been enough of a comfort level because he we weren't totally familiar with each other. We were familiar. I was familiar with his work to a certain degree. I was familiar with his somewhat, somewhat familiar with his philosophy and his you know his background, his pedigree as a coach. But until you you know sit down and spend time and and are able to ask certain questions, there, there wouldn't have been enough peace in this situation. So he, he knew, and, and Coach Fisher was really good uh, to allow him to do that. Um, uh, he he uh, was very cooperative in that way. You alluded to uh, the support of the administration at the outset of this year. <clears throat> uh, obviously, Coach Pruitt, uh, you guys announced, was getting uh, an, an extension and a raise. You, you are as well. It sounds like that's what I hear. <laughs> uh, where uh, to, to? What is that owed? Uh, you, yeah. you mentioned. Well, Kevin I Mr. think. Red. I think. I think. Um, anytime anybody, uh, anytime you hire new people, anytime uh, coaches give pay raises and things of that level, of that nature, you. Uh, I mean, it's always a final decision by the administration. The final decision by our president, as far as given the okay on certain things. So that, that's been true for 14 years, so that's a pretty typical uh, comment. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, uh, a, a lot of these things are, are market-driven, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> there are uh, people that uh, pursue our coaches at times, and there's also just the fact that, uh, I guess there's a cost of doing business uh, at times as well. So there's a little bit of both of that going on. And that, but that's that's really true every year. Coach, forgive me if you already answered this. I know you talked about the recruits, but any returning players, any of them reach out to say, yeah, hey, we really like this coach, or what is he bringing us? Well, I'm sensing a really positive vibe. I didn't I didn't search the internet to see what guys might have tweeted out. And uh, I mean, there was a lot of guys popping in the office wanting to find out, you know, when's he going to be here? Can I meet him? And that type of thing. We are going to have a team meeting on Sunday, and um, to establish some some things in general. But uh, because we'll all be there together, or at least the, the team will be there together, uh, it'll be a good time for uh, Coach Schottenheimer to introduce himself to the offensive team, to the team and the offensive team. Are there other promotions and extensions that are in the, on your staff? Uh, there's some things cooking, and you know when they come out, we'll let you know. You, has all this left you feeling a lot better about the whole support question and relationship with you? Uh, I, I never had it. I never um, I don't think <coughs> I made any comments to the contrary. Um, um, but uh, there's no doubt that uh, uh, you know, we, we've done some things that uh, are going to help us. Have you had any uh, interviews with offensive line prospects, candidates? Well, there's been there's been uh, some conversations with people, uh, and uh, but as far as physically sitting down, uh, there's been one to this point. And how many? Uh, going back to Mark's question, how many other people did you interview for the offensive coordinator position? Uh, in person, one other in person, but a few others uh, uh, through. Um, well, I, said, I, I didn't have many conversations uh, on the phone with anybody, but um, uh, but there's just a lot. I guess a lot of research going on on certain people. But uh, again, there were some people that I, you know, there's maybe a bigger pool that I would like to possibly interview, but uh, to get them to physically break away from where they are and have that have that meeting, uh, some of it. Some of those things just weren't possible. What big question did Brian have for you when you interviewed him? Uh, you know what? He he seemed very highly motivated to uh, to get this position, and uh, was mostly just uh, 
answer the questions that we had for him. He didn't really have many questions. He, I think he did his homework through you. You, know, you do your homework through people you know. Who does he know that knows me? Who does he know that might have worked for me? Who does he know that um, you know, might have uh, coached at Georgia one time or another? And uh, I, you know, he, he did his homework, that's for sure. Mark, did you ever consider at any point the process calling plays again? Back that. Uh, you know that that'll cross your mind, but uh, you know, right? You know, it it could have possibly come to that, but uh, I think we made, we did the best thing for Julia in, in that and bringing him by. So Todd's the only NFL uh, early guy this year. I'm sorry, Todd Gurley's the only NFL early guy this year. And that's something. I don't know when the when the date is. Uh, and nobody's told you otherwise? Right. What, what, are you, what are you making? I mean, I think Bama's had a couple, three today. Uh, well, I just think, you know, some years you get more than others. And some guys, um, you know, I think if they, number one, enjoy their experience at Georgia, and number two, think that they can uh, improve their draft status, uh, they will do, they will stay. And I think a lot of guys, uh, I think what gets lost sometimes is how important the degree is to people. There's a lot of moms and dads and even players that have worked extremely hard. I mean, you get you get to within you know 12 hours of graduation or whatever it may be, um, or, or they know they know by the time uh, a year from now rolls around they'll have a degree in their hand. That, that's important. And I think a lot of them uh, understand how hard it is to come back and try to finish years down the road. And so I think you know the pursuit of their degree means a lot to these guys too. What kind of progress has Jacob Park made since he got on campus about this time last year? And is he in a position where he might be able to contend for that starting job? Well, all, all of our quarterbacks will be in position to compete. And, uh, and Jacob certainly uh, has improved over the time he's been here. Um, it's going to be interesting to see him now, you know, back in the saddle when it comes to, to, to competition. I mean, he did do a lot of scout team work for us and did a beautiful job. And, uh, you know, but now it's now it's time to to hook it up. And, uh, so that, that position, like you know, really every we say it every year. Most every job is is wide open. You know, once while there's a few guys, you're sitting there going, more than likely that guy's going to start. You know? and, uh, but people are not only looking for starting positions, but they're looking for playing time as well. Let's take one more question. Um, sensitive with uh, Jonathan Taylor and Alabama. Did anybody Alabama contact you or? I don't know. I, I didn't get contact. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. <laughs>